This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, you guys, so when it comes to film photography, one thing that a lot of people try to achieve is the vintage look. I mean, this is one of the main reasons why a lot of people gravitate to shooting film in the first place, because there's this nostalgic feeling of the 90s and just overall that feeling of what film looks like that everyone loves and enjoys. This is why people are making Fujifilm simulations. You have apps like Visco and other different effects that try to emulate what film looks like because the vintage look is very very much in right now now with that said achieving the vintage look is something that isn't really hard especially when you choose the right film and the right camera and so in today's episode I'm going to be talking about two film stocks that I personally use and gravitate to as well as the certain types of cameras that you need to use to really nail in that vintage look and feel. But before we jump into that, you guys, if you are new to this channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below and also drop a like on this video for more film photography content. But with that said, let's jump right in. Alright guys, so when it comes to achieving that vintage look on film, it really comes down to two variables. The first one being selecting the right film stock. There are film stocks out there that are going to give you a more clinical and very clean feeling that doesn't always necessarily look vintage. To me, what I think of when I see vintage is sometimes you are going to get some of this enhanced grain. Uh, you're going to get a lot of really nice flash looking photos and everything kind of just looks like it's taken right out of the 90 scrapbook or like an 80 scrapbook for that matter. So of course, subject matter kind of plays into a role of it, but you can still nail all of the variables of what that vintage look looks like with the right film stock. The second variable, in my opinion, is the type of camera that you use. And so this is going to be very important. And in the second half of this episode, I will be talking about what cameras can help you really achieve the look of a vintage film stock. But with that said, let's talk first about the most important thing. What film stocks give you that vintage look? The first one that I really, really love is a film stock that is offered all around. You can get this at drugstores, you can get it online or at the camera store. And ladies and gentlemen, that film stock is no other than Fujifilm Superior 200 or 400. Now this film stock, like I said, Superior comes in both 200 and 400 ISO. And what's great about this film stock is it's one of the more affordable film stocks on the market. I mean, you can get a three pack anywhere between $20 all the way up to like 30. Now to me, it doesn't really matter if you shoot 200 or 400 because both give you very similar results, but I often go for the 400 ISO just because it's a little bit more flexible. You can shoot it in a lot more situations that, you know, maybe not be suit for 200 ISO film. But the great thing about this film stock, you guys, is that it gives you kind of this greenish, almost bluish tint to your photographs. Especially if you shoot this with some flash on a certain camera, you can achieve some really, really fun results. You're gonna have that classic looking film like image. And so this is something that a lot of people try to emulate this Fuji Superior look because it's one of the staples amongst all the film stocks that are currently available. And it's something that a lot of people love. A couple of tips that I would use with Fuji Superior 200 or 400 is to overexpose it by one stop. And so if you're shooting 400 ISO, shoot it at 200. Or if you're shooting 200 ISO, shoot it at 100. A lot of times it gives you that nice kind of pastel look and feel. And this can really help you soften up those colors and saturate them nicely to a point where it looks really, really good. So Fuji Superior 200 or 400. Um, you can even, if you wanted to, somewhat underexpose it and you can get that enhanced grain and uh, really make that dramatic looking film image that a lot of people really really like but this is one of the film stocks that in my opinion give you that vintage look and feel now the second film stock that I personally feel like really gives that vintage look and feel folks is Kodak Gold 200. Now Kodak Gold 200, if you guys don't remember, was one of my favorite film stocks of 2021. I mean, I shot this film all throughout the year and it wasn't until I really sat down and tried to dissect why I love the look of this film um, when I remembered that a lot of my childhood photos were taken on a similar film stock. My mom said that when I was growing up, she shot mostly Kodak Ultramax or Kodak Gold. And so these were the two film stocks that I personally feel 
resonate more with that vintage look and feel because anytime that I look through old photo albums, this is what I see. You get these really nice kind of warm tones. They're really good when you try to take photos of people because of the warm tone, you know, they don't have any weird color shifts on their face or anything like that. You also get some really, really interesting grain. You know, 200 ISO is pretty fine grain. Uh, you're not gonna get a lot of it, but like I said, when you do shoot this with some flash or if you're in a darker setting, that grain kind of enhances and intensifies. And so with that, you get this nice vintage look and feel that you typically can't get with like a digital camera no matter what simulation you have. Another really unique feature from Kodak Gold is when you take photographs outside or just of, you know, random things, you get really nice and deep color saturation. And it's not like over the top, it has a very vintage look to it that everyone knows and loves. And so Kodak Gold is definitely one of those films that on my list definitely scream vintage and uh, you know, Judging from the photographs here, I hope you guys can see why. All right, so now that we've talked about what film stocks I feel like give you that really nice vintage look and feel, I wanna talk more now about the cameras because the cameras definitely play a variable. There's a certain combination of a lens with a flash that really kind of dial in and complete the look here. And I wanna talk more about that because it's actually really attainable and a lot of you guys may already have it yourself. But before we jump into that, you guys, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, moving into 2023, you need to have your own dedicated photography website. Now, luckily, Squarespace makes it simple. You have award-winning templates that you can use to get your website up and running in minutes. You can create an e-commerce shop, a portfolio, and probably one of my newest favorite features, the videos page, where you can upload your video content or link it from a YouTube video directly to your website. This way clients can see your video footage or just have some samples of what you do. So if you want to get started with Squarespace today, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout and you guys can receive 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Okay, so the vintage look and feel, how do you achieve that through a camera? Personally, for me, there is one way that always seems to get it, and it's simple. It is a point and shoot. Now, of course, you can achieve that vintage look with a Nikon F3 or an SLR or a rangefinder, but if you want to simplify it and you want to get that nice and vintage look and feel, I noticed that most of the times when I am using this combination of film stock and point and shoot, I always seem to get vintage looking photographs and it's hard to explain it and I think it might have to do with the lenses that are in these cameras. So my recommendation you guys is any 35 millimeter film point and shoot. It could be a zoom or it could be a fixed lens like this one. So this right here is the Nikon L35 AF and this camera is great because it has an on camera flash a 35 millimeter 2.8 lens and it is again like I said a fixed lens point and shoot. Now it doesn't have to necessarily be this one, you know, there are a ton of different point and shoot film cameras out there. Whatever you have, I'm sure it will do well. Ask your relatives if they have old 35 millimeter point and shoots and I guarantee you one of them will. And as long as it has an on camera flash, as well as a zoom or just a fixed lens, you're gonna get some really, really good results. You see, the reason why I feel like a lot of what the vintage photographs look like is mainly because what I consider to be vintage is like what I see again in my photo books from my childhood. So a lot of those photos were taken with either disposable cameras or, you know, cameras like the Canon Owl or the Canon Sure Shot, you know, cameras that weren't necessarily top of the line, but they have this certain characteristic to the lens, especially because it won't always be extremely sharp. A lot of them are soft and they provide you with an imperfectly perfect image and combined with the grain, the colors of the film stock, as well as just the scene, it creates a really, really nice vintage look. And so the best way to emulate that, in my opinion, is to use these older 35 millimeter point and shoots. Anything will work but try it out with your flash. The flash really adds a certain magic to the photographs. And if you can use your flash to your advantage, especially like if you're in a darker situation, you can get some really, really fun looking images. Now I did mention disposable cameras and this is something that I wanna talk about really quick because disposable cameras, even though they most of the time are just one-time uses, can get you some really nice looking photographs as well. 
you know, you can't forget that disposable used to be super cheap and you can buy them at a drugstore for like two to three dollars a pop. And that little on camera flash, man, is just magical. And so if you wanted to go the route of a disposable, I think you would achieve that same look like Fuji creates like a Fuji Superior 400 disposable that will get you some really nice vintage looking images. But if you can take the time to maybe go out there, spend a little bit of money, like 20, 30 bucks, uh, maybe even go to a thrift store, find an old school 35 millimeter point and shoot, and then just continuously reload that. It is far better in my opinion than a disposable camera. Also you guys, nowadays companies like Heyday, this is a freaking Target brand, are creating 35 millimeter cameras that are just focus free, that have built in flash. So I'm going to be doing a review on this guy right here in the next couple of days. I'm gonna go out to San Francisco, take some photos with it, try to achieve that nice vintage look and feel. But um, if you guys are interested in seeing how this thing performs as well as maybe possibly even winning one for a giveaway, stay tuned till that video because I will be giving one of these away in that episode. But you guys, there are a ton of different options out there for cameras, uh, but just remember whatever it is that you guys find, in my opinion at least, the vintage look really comes from the film stock as well as the camera combination. So any old 35 millimeter point and shoot plus Fuji Superior or Kodak Gold 200 is going to give you some really, really nice results. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think or you know if you have any other ways to achieve that vintage film look. What film stocks do you guys shoot to achieve that? Let me know in the comment section down below. But that's gonna wrap it up, you guys. I'll see you in the next one. As always, Minolta Gang. Whew.